Today we will be talking about a city that has really been in the news a lot lately because of the current situation there. And although I won't be getting into the politics of the current situation, I really do want to tell you about the history of this amazing city. It was a place where all were welcome and was ruled by many. This is of course Ukraine's capital city, Kiev. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. It really does make a big difference. If you're coming back, welcome back. And please consider subscribing as well. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into this. Legend has it that in the fifth century, three brothers, Kai, Shek, Koryov, and their sister, uh, Leibid, founded a city and the city took its name from the eldest brother, Kai. St. Andrew also prophesied that there'd be a city standing where Kiev stands today. And this was in 60 AD. There are also two other theories that are going around about the origin of Kiev. Uh, the first is that the Slavs came up from the Black Sea and settled the area. The second is that the Norsemen, Vikings, came down from Scandinavia and made a trading post and settled there and founded Kiev. We do know that it was probably a mixture of everything. One other fact that we can look at is that the language spoken in that area is a lot more similar to the Slavs compared to the Scandinavian languages. So you take of that what you will. The early people that settled this area were known as the Kievan Rus, and they built their principality based off of trade. They were part of the ancient Silk Road, bringing goods in from the east to the west, or from the west to the east. Uh, and they would deal in things like fur, wax, and slaves. Like today, people in uh, Ukraine are often part of agriculture. Uh, it's still known as the farm of Europe today because of the amount of wheat and grain it produces, and it was the same back then. The ruler of this Kievan Rus was called a Grand Prince, and that is why Kiev is a principality, not an empire or a kingdom, even though it is as big or sometimes bigger than some kingdoms. The Grand Princes at the time aligned themselves with the main power of the day in that area, uh, and then converted themselves away from paganism into Byzantine orthodoxy, so they were aligned with the Byzantines. They also had an opportunity to become part of the Islamic world. Um, but they rejected this opportunity because the Grand Prince at that time, Vladimir I, said he wanted to drink alcohol. By 1880, Prince Oleg the Seer and his descendants really established Kiev and the Kievan Rus. They set out to further the reaches of their land, and by the end of the century, they controlled most of Central Europe from the bottom at the Black Sea all the way to the top at the Baltics. This really did mean whatever was coming over from the east to the west or from the west to the east via this land route had to go through the Kievan Rus, which made them fabulously wealthy. For the next 200 years, they grew and grew. There was even a group of Kievan Rus that went further east. And in 1147, they settled in a forest and cut down the forest to create another city. This city, of course, is Moscow. So Kiev was established literally hundreds of years before Moscow. The principality was getting stronger and stronger, but then all of a sudden, it shrunk and it fell altogether. Ever heard of Genghis Khan? Yeah, him and his golden horn showed up around 1241 and the princes of Kiev were forced to accept Mongolian rulers as their overlords. This cut the Kievan Rus off from Europe. It cut them off from the Byzantines, it cut them off from the Ottomans, and they weren't really accepted as Mongolians either. So they were stuck in this labyrinth of no man's land. The Mongols also went to Moscow, which had now become a grand duchy, and they did what Hitler and Napoleon couldn't do. They reached the city and they burnt it to the ground. This forced the Grand Princes of the Kievan Rus to move their capital from Kiev to Vladimir on Kiazma in 1299 to keep their ruling titles. But they got weaker and weaker, and eventually in 1320, they were actually beaten and defeated by the Lithuanians. Kiev was now ruled by Lithuanians, but they're still part of the Mongol Empire. So it was a very difficult time for the Kievans because taxes were demanded from the Lithuanians and the Mongolians. By 1362, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania actually beat out the Mongolians, the Golden Horn Army, and finally brought Kiev into their Grand Dukedom. Now, even though Kiev was part of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, uh, they were supposed to be protected by Lithuania, it was theirs, but they were constantly being attacked from the south, from the Crimean Tatars, who, by 1482, actually destroyed the city and implemented their own ruler. By this time, the main religion was orthodoxy, but there were more Jewish people coming in to settle in the area because of Sigmund II in the 16th century, who was a really tolerant leader. And he said, anyone can come as long as they pay taxes. So there was a little bit of a religious war going on between the Orthodox, the Catholic, and the Jews, uh, all living in the same city. 
The Grand Duchy was actually then unified and developed into the Kingdom of Poland in 1569. So the Kievans found themselves under new rulership, the fourth rulership, uh, and this would definitely not be the last rulers of Kiev. Here, the city grew and it was turned into a place of academia. It was the foremost education centre in Central and Eastern Europe and multiple languages were spoken in the city. By 1648, the Kazakhs actually came from Eastern Slavic steppes and took control of the city and formed their new government. So this obviously wasn't recognized by the Polish crown, but it was ruled by the Kazakhs. So the Kievans got their fifth ruler. This left the door open for a budding empire to come in and take control of the land of their birth. Moscow had turned into a Tsardom and it wanted more land. So they went and they fought against the Cossacks and the Polish crown and they finally took control of Kiev in 1667. So now we have the sixth ruler of Kiev. The whole time Kiev had actually been semi-autonomous but they slowly started to lose their autonomy and they came under complete control by the Russian Empire in 1775 under Catherine the Great. By 1874, Kiev was mainly Polish in culture and not Russian. The language spoken by the people in Kiev was diverse as well, with Ukrainian being spoken, Yiddish, Russian, Polish, and even German. So the people living inside the city were completely diverse. During World War I, of course, 1917, Nicholas II, the Tsar of all Russia, was overthrown by the Bolshevik party, um, which meant that the Russian Empire collapsed and the Ukrainians saw an opportunity to finally become autonomous and declared their freedom, declared themselves an independent state. Now, before I go on, I'm just going to warn you, this is where things get really busy and really confusing, so please hold on to your hats. We left with the Kievans finally being independent, but by January 1918, the Russian Soviet Red Army, those were the communists, came into the city and ruled it. They retook the city. We have the seventh ruler. But the German Imperial Army was still a thing, and they came in and occupied the city in that same year. Uh, now we have the eighth ruler. When the Germans failed and left World War I, which led to the ending of the German Empire, um, Ukraine was declared independent again. So these guys really, really, really wanted their independence. The White Army, who were anti-Soviet Russians, actually came in and took the city in 1920. So we have the ninth ruler of Kiev. Then the Polish came back and the Polish took the city. So we have the 10th ruler. Then the Red Army, these are the Soviets, uh, took over the city once more and we have the 11th ruler. I know, in one year, from then on, they were known as the Ukraine SSR. They were part of the Soviet Union but they were led into famine through Stalin's rule in the 1930s. And the Soviets started to destroy churches to do away with religion, such as St. Michael's Golden Domed Cathedral, which stands today, and it had been standing for hundreds of years. The Kievans and the Ukrainians wanted to have a nation of their own, and so they started to have uprisings against these Soviets. But these uprisings were met with thousands of arrests in the night, and people being taken to mass graves to be murdered, or sent to gulags to be executed by hard labor. World War II finally rolled over and Kiev had a new occupier, the 12th occupier. In 1941, Nazi Germany had met the Soviet Red Army who had decided to plant thousands of mines in the city and allow the Germans to come into the city and take the city. But on the 24th of September, they detonated these mines, killing thousands of German troops and thousands of Ukrainian citizens. In reaction to this, the Germans went on a killing spree and in just two days, they massacred 33,771 Jews in the residence of Kiev at Baba Yar. The Germans were beaten back out of the city by the Red Army, and on the 6th of November, 1943, it came under Soviet rule once more, the 13th ruler. By the end of World War II, the city really developed into a place of education, and it grew rapidly, both in terms of its economy and industry. The first helicopter was designed and made in Kiev. The city was a predominant part of the USSR, and so there was a push for Russification of the city, but it was met with resilience, and there were a number of uprisings that had to be put down by the Soviet government. It's really hard to know what actually happened during the Cold War, because of course Kiev was behind the Iron Curtain, and in 1991 the USSR finally collapsed, and Kiev and the Ukraine gained its independence. The start of this year, 2022, has seen Kiev and the Ukrainian independence being tested once more by their old occupiers, Russia. At one point in time, it truly was the center of Central Europe, a place where all will welcome. It's had its fair share of occupation, and only time will tell how this latest drive for Ukraine and the Kiev will end. Thank you for watching. The more you know.